A new study finds that your lifestyle impacts how you age. We've talked a lot about the differences between chronologic age versus biologic age, and there is a mismatch or difference. Some people are aging biologically faster than they are aging chronologically. For example, if you look at your own odometer, my odometer says I'm 41 years old. My biologic odometer might say I'm 37, it might say I'm 42. Last time I checked, it was on par with my chronologic age, but I've changed a lot of things in my diet, my lifestyle, my stress, sauna therapy, cold plunges, all those. So I'm, I'm going to redo my epigenetic age to look at my biologic age. And we've talked a lot about the Dunedin study before, which is the ongoing 40-year study looking at the differences in 1,400 people between their biologic age versus their chronologic age. Now, this recently published study looking at the Irish longitudinal study on aging, the so-called TILDA, that is similar to the Dunedin study, Looking at people, what, what they found in this study was that people with metabolic syndrome age significantly biologically faster compared to people without metabolic syndrome. And so this supports something that we've talked a lot about before, and that is that having aberrant glucose control and poor metabolic health is pro-aging. It accelerates biologic age because we know glucose can attach itself to different biological molecules, create what's called advanced glycation end products, we know that people that have metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of cardiometabolic risk factors, including dyslipidemia, high blood pressure, increased waist to hip ratio, and more. And it turns out that that diagnosis is statistically linked with increased rate of biologic aging, supporting the hypothesis that one of the best ways to optimize your longevity and support biologic aging, and that can be as simple as changing your diet, your lifestyle, exercising more, managing your stress, managing your sleep, getting sunlight, you know, all the basic things we talk about every single day on this channel and on different platforms that can help you age better, have less gray hair, maybe, maybe uh, less wrinkles, have better energy, better sex performance, uh, better sleep, better memory and cognition. All of those things are really important. And so what's unique about the study is they looked at, uh, it was about 469 individuals out of the 8,000 people. And they wanted to look at their epigenetic clocks. And we'll define what those are in just a moment. And there's various tests that I will link in the description below that I'm not financially affiliated with, but you may be interested in, in checking out. But we're gonna focus more on table four here and talk about the importance of exercise and having low inflammation, because it turns out that these are factors that are strongly tethered to an inverse association with accelerated biologic aging. But first friends, just wanna say thank you for being here. I appreciate your likes, your comments. If you're enjoying this video, please share this with a friend who may benefit from this information, particularly friends who have a little bit of a belly, who are still smoking, who aren't exercising, because they need to know that those choices now will impact how they look in five, 10, 15, 20 years. It may impact their lifespan and their quality of life towards the end of their life, which is really important to acknowledge also because exercise is so important for metabolic health, for decreasing visceral fat or belly fat and reducing cardiovascular risk factors. Just want to let you know about the novel creatine containing electrolyte six by myoscience. This is a excellent caffeine free pre or intra workout. It contains creatine along with real salt, along with magnesium, taurine and potassium a phenomenal way to increase your return on your investment in the gym. So you're getting more mileage from your workouts, you're getting more noticeable benefits so that exercise becomes a keystone lifestyle habit. There's over 700 reviews over at myoscience.com. You can save with the code podcast at checkout. You can take one serving before your workout. And if you're a real you know, adventurous person, you can take another serving after the fact and get over five grams of creatine, which has been shown to increase strength and hypertrophy and exercise performance. Again, you can save with the code podcast at myoscience.com. So let's look at the characteristics here of table four. I think it's important to acknowledge the p-value, which indicates the statistical significance of the different associations with uh, people who exercise or don't smoke or smoke versus uh, not and C-reactive protein. And so I think this is really important. The individuals who aged the slowest had significantly lower levels of C-reactive protein. And this is a proxy of inflammation. Now we look at adiponectin. We know that higher adiponectin is linked with better metabolic health. And there is a significant association with adiponectin and metabolic health. And I've heard from various people over the years, like Brian Mole and other folks that are starting to use adiponectin and add this to their metabolic health assessments and primary health assessments. I haven't done this for my own, uh, in my own practice or myself, but I think it is probably good to start adding adiponectin to your annual blood work. It's not very expensive, but this adipocytokine 
is strongly tethered to metabolic health. Higher levels are better than lower levels. There's a lot of different ways to improve adiponectin, starting with exercise, starting with eating less processed carbohydrates, even possibly taking fish oil might increase levels of adiponectin. We know adiponectin and leptin operate in inverse of, of one another. When leptin levels get high, adiponectins, adiponectin levels tend to get low, and that is associated with poor metabolic health. But if we look at exercise, it seems that people who exercise more intensely and have a high percentage of overall exercise volume and intensity have significantly lower levels of the rates of biologic aging. Uh, you can see here smoking as well is uh, inversely correlated with biologic aging. And I think these are the factors that are, are quite uh, significant and important. But if we look at this overall chart here, with the diagnosis of metabolic syndrome, there are strong associations with increased rates of biologic aging. And you can see the effect size that that has. And so uh, if you want to age faster and look not as good as you get older, then start smoking, start eating processed food, drinking soda pop, drinking beer, watching football all day, eating fast food. That is the fastest way to increase your rate of biologic aging and increase the demise of your health span. And I'm, of course, I'm not recommending you do that, but we now have the data. And that's what's unique about these epigenetic clocks. And I'll, I'll put links in the description below to one of the tests that I've worked with clients that have used this. I think it's really fascinating. Uh, we did a review several years ago in 2019 about a company called My DNA. Age. Uh, but there's other companies that have come on the market that are looking at the Dunedin Pace of Aging Methylation Profile, the Dunedin POAM, and combining that with other epigenetic clocks, the Grim Age clock, uh, there's the Horvath clock, there's all these different epigenetic clocks, and they're aggregating all of that data into one report. And I think this is really important for people like yourself who want to know, if, are these lifestyle interventions improving how you're going to live and function as you get older? And I think these are excellent approximations for how your lifestyle is impacting your overall biologic pace of aging. So suffice it to say, if you want to age more gracefully, don't have metabolic syndrome or the futures of metabolic syndrome, which include a low HDL, high triglyceride, high blood pressure, increased waist hip ratio, waist circumference, so, and dyslipidemia. And so those, this cluster of cardiometabolic risk factors increase the mechanisms that accelerate biologic aging and, and, and are also associated with metabolic dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, and all the seven hallmarks of aging. And so if we want to look better, have less gray hair, bald less quickly, uh, have less wrinkles, all these things, uh, we just need to support metabolic health. And so it comes, uh, how do we do that? Well, we walk eight to 10,000 steps per day. We eat in a confined window throughout the day, eating in a 12 to 14 hour window. We try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, get some morning sunlight, do some, some sort of faith or spiritual based practice, meditation, going to church, having a spiritual practice is really important. Having a stress reduction practice like meditation or breath work is really important. Going in the sauna three to four days per week, maybe doing a cold shower when you get up in the morning or before bed, uh, exercise exercising intensely for 150 up to 300 minutes per week. All these things, eating real food, eating around a gram uh, per pound of protein per body weight per day. I mean, these are all basic strategies that we should be doing, not having sugar-sweetened beverages, not drinking alcohol. Um, you know, it is kind of a long list, but once you implement this in your life, you can travel, you can be, still be social, you can work, you can do all the things, have a family, and still uh, improve your health. Because if we look at people with all the money in the world, like Steve Jobs, had access to the best doctors, you know, was the wealthiest person uh, in his era, still, you know, didn't live his life to the fullest potential because he had pancreatic cancer. Now, some of that could be genetic, some of that could have been his stress or his lifestyle. And so uh, it just goes to show that at the end of the day, your health is your greatest asset. You can have all this money and work really, really hard. But if you burn the clock at both ends and accelerate your pace of biologic aging and develop a dis-ease as a consequence of that, uh, what's the point of accumulating all that wealth? So I just wanted to share this study with you. The title of the study, and I'll link it below, is Metabolic Syndrome Accelerates Epigenetic Aging in Older Adults, Finding from the Irish Longitudinal Study on Aging. So essentially, metabolic syndrome, the cluster of cardiometabolic risk factors, and belly fat is problematic and counterproductive for aging gracefully. So if you don't want wrinkles, gray hair, baldness, all the saggy skin stuff that comes with aging, 
start exercising, start eating real food, managing your stress, and possibly doing some intermittent fasting. And you will decrease the, that cluster of interrelated cardiometabolic risk factors and possibly support your pace of aging. So that's it for today, friends. As always, I appreciate you tuning in to this video. Appreciate your comments, your likes, your, your shares, and we'll catch you in a future show down the road. Bye now.